Hello my lovies and welcome back to Crazy But Not Dangerous. I'm Shorty Vaughn and I'm four foot five. I like to cook budget meals. I also like to host family dinner night. Yay hooray. That's today and I've just been chopping away, just chip chopping away and getting things all prepped up. I'm down to my last few things to do. Thought I'd bring gear along for the right. Sometimes people ask me, do all of your dishes turn out? No, no, some of them do not turn out, but I do not show the recipes that don't turn out. If it, if recipe is good, if it tastes good, if it has the experience that I want, then I share it with you, my friends, my lovelies. If it doesn't turn out, you know, we still eat it because I hate waste, but I don't want you to waste your time, effort, money, or ingredients on something that didn't just work out as well as I intended it to. So I don't share those with you. But today I'm making an exception because we are going to try to rescue something and I think that we can do it. So I made pork and beans the other night. Yay, hooray. And I wanted to make them in my instant pressure cooker because I don't cook in it a whole lot. I'm a little bit nervous about it and I thought, yeah, pork and beans. Found what I thought was a great recipe online, had five stars, followed it exactly. And I used dry, um, I used dry white navy beans in it and those plumped up juicy and delicious. I used my um, country style pork ribs for my pork and beans. Yeah, they were juicy and meaty and good and everything else, you know, it was like the sauce was like a homemade barbecue sauce. Smelled and tasted fantastic. I've got it all in the instant pot. Then I go down to the bottom of the recipe and the final step is to add four cups of water. And I'm thinking that seems like a lot, but you know, like other recipes always say, four cups of water for the instant pot. So yeah, I put four cups of water in there and they, the meat cooked beautifully, the beans were plump and juicy and tender, and the sauce was good. But four cups of water was way too much. Yeah, it was soupy. And we ate it, and it was actually quite delicious, but it was more soupy than pork and bean texture, in my opinion. Um, so while the flavor was great, it wasn't quite what I intended. So what I'm going to do to try to, you know, save these pork and beans is I have two cans of white navy beans here that I have drained and rinsed. And I'm going to go ahead and add those right into those, you know, leftover pork and beans. I'm going to give them just a little stir up. Now this cooled and looked quite thick as it cooled. But I'm thinking that as we add heat to this, that it is um, going to loosen up. So I'm going to keep my eagle eye on it. Does it need a little bit more liquid? Because I can always add some, but I don't have any more cans of beans. So I can add some liquid. I'm going to add some barbecue sauce to it, just a touch. So I've got this Bullseye Everyday Honey Barbecue Sauce. That's our favorite. I get it over at the Dollar Tree. It's a great bargain at $1.25 because at my Albertsons, even their store brand um, Signature Select Barbecue Sauce is almost $4. Those quick prepared items are getting so pricey. Yeah, so I did buy it over at the Dollar Tree and I have maybe added a quarter of a cup and we'll see how that does. Like I said, it had a really great flavor. It just wasn't the it just wasn't the consistency that I really wanted. So I'm gonna go ahead and stir that in. And it had plenty of salt. <clears throat> it had plenty of seasoning. It doesn't need any of that for me. And I am gonna go ahead and put the lid on this baby. Because everything in here is fully cooked, I am going to turn this 
to about 325 degrees because I have almost two hours till family dinner. And I think that's going to be enough time for that just to heat through. But we're keeping our eagle eye on it for the moisture level, just in case things have really tightened up and I need just a little bit of water or something like that. A little water, a little apple juice would be great. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Well, that's heavy. That's probably like five or six pounds of pork and beans. Yay, hooray. I love family dinner. I love the rustling around and the hustle and the bustle. And I like getting all the groceries and getting all the bargains. And I like all the prep work and the chippity chop and everything like that. I think it's super fun. And then they come. And there are my babies. You know, my baby sisters and my older sister and, you know, brother-in-laws and babies. Yeah, my sister has five kids. It's a lot. My big cookie, she's all grown up. Yeah, she's all out on her own. I'm so proud of her. Just love them all. Just going to squeeze them. Yeah, squeeze them till they pop. I'm also going to feed them up because really that's my love language yeah let me make you a big old plate of food and get you a fork and a knife and you know some sweet tea or mountain dew or dr pepper yeah that's oh it fills my heart i feel so good about it and you know what else i feel really good about is making some homemade macaroni and cheese now this is my biggest tray it is a 10 by 18 inch baking dish it's from Corningware. It's as old as the hills. Yeah. And I have 32 ounces of cooked pasta in here. And that has slightly cooled. I'm okay with that. Because we're going to make the cheese sauce. And then we're going to make a little crumb topping. We're going to put it in the oven and let it bake. Hot diggity. So I've got a um, saucepan here. It's my, one of my biggest ones. And I'm going to put it on the heat on about a five. I have a stick of butter. That's eight tablespoons. I'm going to throw it right on in there. This is not low carb, but this will feed a lot of people. And I wanted to make it today because we do have the holidays coming up. And if you're feeding a crowd, this actually can be very inexpensive to make because I got the pasta over at the dollar store. So we have about two dollars worth of pasta because I didn't quite use two whole boxes. Oven's preheated. Thank you very much. So two dollars for the pasta. A stick of butter, we'll say that's another 75 cents. I also have about eight tablespoons of flour for me when I'm making my cheese sauce. Or if you want to be fancy, you can call it a bechamel. I like equal parts fat, that's the butter, and equal parts flour to make my roux. And then we're going to add in, you know, the milk and all the cheeses. Now let's talk about what your cheese is. You can put any cheese you want to. And what you're going to find at your grocery store right now is you're going to see sales on butter. You're going to see sales on cheese. Both of those freeze really well. So you can stock your freezer for the holidays with some of these sales items. And then as you get closer to the holiday, you're gonna see the ham, the turkey, that kind of thing. Roast beef, that's what we're having for Thanksgiving. Um, you're gonna see all of those start to come on sale. But you know, big batch macaroni and cheese, you could make that just for a weeknight experience. You could even chop up a little ham in there. Maybe put a little broccoli or spinach my butter is melting. Yay, hooray. Bring you on over and let you see the action. Just going to let that melt up here a little bit more. And then I'm going to add my eight tablespoons of flour. That's also about half a cup. So, yep, equal parts fat and flour. Makes a good roux in my opinion. I'm going to go ahead and add it. It's going to be fine. No worries. I'm just going to give that just a little stir up. 
get all that flour incorporated with the fats. Get a little toast on that flour so it tastes yummy and delicious and knock out any lumps that I might have. If you feel like you've got a lot of lumps, grab a whisk. It'll be all right. And I also have about six cups of milk. So let's go ahead and get that on in there. Yay, hooray. Now I am using full fat milk today. Bought it just for this occasion. You could use full fat milk. You could use half and half. You could use heavy whipping cream if you're so inclined. I'm not going to say no. Treat yourselves, baby. All right. Now I am going to let this just come back up to a boil so we can see its fullest thickening. Yay, hooray. And I've got some dry mustard, some Coleman's. I'm going to add two teaspoons to that. A little bit of salt not a whole lot because my cheese is going to be plenty salty and I am going to add plenty of grinds of black pepper because um, I love it and I think that it can really hold up well in macaroni and cheese it needs just that little something that little bite we might even use more Get that incorporated in there of course as it's boiling it will continue to thicken not worried about it at all let's get our cheese out for my cheese today i've got an eight ounce package of swiss and gruyere gruyere is a very smooth cheese and is an excellent melting cheese will make my macaroni and cheese absolutely scrumptious there we go i've got about four ounces of parmesan not mad at that one bit. I have about six ounces of a white and orange cheddar. Both of those were mild. And then I have about six ounces of cream cheese. Um, that was a block and I, you know, took a little bit off from my bagel the other day. Cream cheese is great in a cheese sauce because it will act as a stabilizer and help prevent your sauce from breaking. At a lot of restaurants, they use cream cheese, like in an Alfredo sauce. You know, if you're thinking, hmm, my Alfredo sauce at home isn't quite like the restaurants. Yeah, that little tiny bit of cream cheese that they add to an Alfredo sauce helps stabilize it while it's on the line as they're saucing pasta. And so, yeah, if you're making ahead some Alfredo and you're worried about your sauce breaking, just add a little few ounces of cream cheese and that will help your uh, sauce stabilize until you're all ready for it. Get this a little stir up here. Okay, so we are almost at a boil. We are at a low simmer and I can tell you that this sauce is thickening beautifully. I can run my fingers through it and it's holding up. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and turn off the heat. Move it over to the cold burner over here. Give it a little bit of a stir up. If you've got any lumps, now is the time. Get your whisk out. Get your whisk out while it's off the heat. I'm going to go ahead and add my cheeses. Yeah. going to add all of it in. So eight ounces of the Swiss and Gruyere. Got about four ounces of the Parmesan cheese. That's why I'm not adding a lot of salt because that Parmesan, plenty salty enough. Have about six ounces of my Vermont white cheddar and my yellow mild cheddar. Both of those are going to be super good, yummy and delicious. 
I like that tang, that sharp little bite from the um, from the cheddar. Yeah. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and stir that in. Yay, hooray. That's gonna get all melty. I'm gonna add my cream cheese to it. And that's about six ounces. Give or take. You could put the eight ounces in. Nobody's ever gonna complain about too much cheese. I mean, unless you're lactose intolerant. And then, you know, there's lots of good dairy-free and vegan options out there now. If that's what you need, baby, you go for it. You should still be able to enjoy mac and cheese. And this is getting super thick, super, super creamy and cheesy. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a pretty good cheese pull. I'm not mad at that one bit. I have a little nut egg here in a microplane. This is kind of like a rasp. Yeah, but you know, food safe, food quality. And I am just going to give this a little microplane of nutmeg. This is completely optional. Not too much, not too little, just a little. It just adds this certain, I don't know, element to it of you can't put your finger on it, but this has something in it that makes it extra. And it's completely optional. Yeah, you don't have a little bit of fresh nutmeg. You don't got some in the cupboard. If you were using dry, it would be a pinch. It would be like one eighth of a teaspoon, if that. Yeah, just a little essence of it. All right, let's do it. Let's go ahead and pour over our cheese sauce here. Yay, hooray. Get that mixed in and we'll add the rest. Oh, my cream cheese is kind of in a little lump. I got impatient and didn't wait for it to melt all the way. So we'll just go ahead and push it around. It'll be all right because we're going to put a topping on this. We're going to get this in back into the oven to bake for that, you know, golden uh, crispy topping on the mac and cheese. Yes, please and thank you. That sauce is so rich. And I always like to make just a little bit more sauce than I think that I really need because sometimes my macaroni and cheese goes into the oven and maybe those noodles suck up a little bit extra and I don't want, I don't want a dry um, mac and cheese. I want it to have plenty of moisture, yeah. And even if it's too saucy, you know what? I can live with it. Absolutely. So for my new viewers, I'm one of nine children. I have five older sisters. Sandy, Patty, Sherry, Linda, Glenda. Unfortunately, Sandy, Patty, and Linda have passed away. So Sherry and Glenda are the two remaining older sisters. Then there's me. I'm number six. Melissa is number seven, Jackie is number eight, Mark was number nine, and he has passed away also. We're missing a few, you know, because they have passed on, but they are still with us here today. Yay, hooray, just like my mom. I, every time I do family dinner, I hear her whispering in my ear, add salt, add salt, shorty bun, add salt. Anyhow. the rest of this cheese sauce because it would be a shame to waste any creamy yeah there's not none of it it's not going to be dry i can guarantee you that there's a lot of things in this life i can tell, i i don't know about but i can tell you that this will not be dry put that all in there every little bit yay hooray i don't think i can tilt it because i'm pretty sure well i'm not sure i can lift it either all right, there we go. It's about 64 ounces of absolute delight right there. Hot diggity. Let's make a crumb topping. Okay, I've got one stick of butter. I'm gonna go ahead and pop that in the microwave for about a minute. Get it all melty, yay, right? 
Okay, so I have half cup of melted butter. I also have some plain panko breadcrumbs. Got them at the Dollar Tree. Yeah, they're a great bargain at the Dollar Tree at $1.25 because the same size container over at my Albertsons, way over $2. So I'm gonna pour about half the container into the butter. And that's about three and a half ounces, four ounces, something like that. Gonna give them a little stir up, make sure that my breadcrumbs are all buttery and delicious. Yay, hooray. If you felt like you needed more breadcrumbs, well, go ahead, put them in there. It'll be all right. I'm not gonna say no. I think the crunchy topping is really the best part besides the cheese. I mean, the macaroni, it's just a conveyance for all that goodness. So I'm adding just a little tiny bit more because I don't want people to fight. And then I'll just go ahead and sprinkle this right over top getting as good coverage as I possibly can. Yay, hooray. Those baked beans, they're smelling good. I just checked on them. Yeah, I don't I don't know if we're going to have to add any liquid or not, but I still have another hour that I'm going to cook those. And um, yeah, we'll just see what happens. It'll be all right. I'm not worried. All righty, there we go all covered with breadcrumbs, all ready to go in the oven. I'm going to go ahead and put these in with the baked beans. And I think that's going to be just fine. I'm going to cover it with aluminum foil. It's at a low enough temperature. I think it's going to be just fine. Everything in here is already pre-cooked and just needs to be warmed through, just like those baked beans. So I'll take the uh, foil off at the last, you know, 10, 15 minutes. I'll crank the temperature up and get this all toasty brown. Yay, hooray. Bring it back and I'll show you what it looks like right before we eat. I've gotten phone calls all day. Yeah, we're, I've got people coming from out of town, across town, downtown. They're coming from all over. I need your address one more time. And can I bring anything? and all the oh yeah i'm ready i'm ready i'm so excited yay hooray i've got that grill loaded up we've got peppers and onions and bratwurst italian sausage uh spicy habanero sausages cheddar and bratwurst bratwurst and hot wings and yeah this is just First load. Yay, hooray. Hi, I'm Sherry. I'm Tanya's oldest sister. Nice to see everybody on YouTube. Hi, I'm Melissa, and I'm Tanya's youngest sister. That's baby sister. Hi, I'm Charlie. I'm the Absolutely. Hi, I'm Rachel. I am Charlie's friend and the Bree's mom. Yay. Here's Corey. He is our resident artist, our sidewalk chalk artist hello everybody my name's andrew Ayers, and uh i'm tanya's husband there we go how you doing yay thank hey. you bubba <laughs> yeah. hi i'm julian hi. Hi. And I'm that's, niece. Niece. that's I big cookie that's and that's her boyfriend and they are so sweet look at how precious they are i just want to squeeze them okay here we go baked macaroni and cheese um, pork and beans. We have sauteed onions and bell pepper. Hamburger patties till the cows come home. A variety of spicy sausages. A variety of plain hot dogs and sausage. We've got lettuce. We've got tomato. Cheese. Macaroni salad. All the condiments. Tons of chips. Yay hooray. Including my favorite jalapeno kettle cooked and some barbecue we've got chips and salsa and chips and a ranch dip and we have sweets do we have sweets we have cookies and we have ring cakes one's pumpkin one is a uh, cinnamon streusel we've got cupcakes yeah there's cookies that oatmeal raisin that's calling my name yeah 
All right, my lovelies. Well, everyone's gone home. The dishes are all done. The trash has all been taken out. And now I'm just sitting here relaxing, getting ready to go to bed. I am exhausted. I am hoping to sleep the sleep of the righteous. Anyhow, yeah, had a great time today. Thanks for coming along for the ride. Hope that you enjoyed this video. Anyhow, be good, be careful, look both ways, and I'll see you next time. Thanks, my lovelies.